screen. Uh, this is eyes open, sorry, eyes closed on the left and eyes open on the right. And you see that there's different frequencies up here, delta, theta, alpha, beta, and high beta. These are columns of frequencies. And the colors are statistics. So this little bar here is a bell curve. And basically we care about things that are out in the corners. And so for you, there's a few things showing up. Um, when you open your eyes, the delta persists. Usually we open our eyes and it goes away. So we'll spot a delta if your eyes closed. When you open your eyes, it actually gets bigger. So I do think you've had a little bit of wear and tear here, Tony, on the right hand right. side. There's been some impacts right there. Um, also in the back of your head with eyes closed, we're seeing a lot of activity. This is the visual system. So I'm guessing you have a little bit of anxiety, a little buzziness, like you're kind of on. You know, your right. brain can't ever quite check out. Just learn the world can be a threatening or you know, dangerous place. And so you basically have your mentor, mental fists up and you're always kind of keeping yourself safe, checking out the environment. Right. Um, the alpha being a little high means a little bit of spaciness, potentially. A little bit of uh, check, being checked out at times. Um, and these are the same maps below. They're just visualized differently. The ones on top, they emphasize the small patterns in the data. The ones at the bottom emphasize the broad patterns. And actually, there's no difference in the bottom and the top in terms of what we're seeing. Uh, the bottom does give us two more rows. These bottom two rows are connectivity. And your connectivity is a little bit altered in these slow frequencies. It's low. What does that mean? Connectivity? It probably means some like wear and tear. Like, the track's been broken apart a little bit. Um, and same thing, eyes open. This, this blue means that it's low connectivity in this data frequency. And so again, you look like you have a little bit of spaciness or inattention, probably some wear and tear damage, but it doesn't show up as an actual traumatic brain injury. Let me show you that, that statistical analysis now. So this is the, um, this is the, the TBI marker, if you will, traumatic brain injury marker. And uh, the green curve is the typical population, and the red curve is a traumatic brain injury population database. And we're measuring tract integrity, like connectivity throughout your brain. Right. And you are the dotted line between those two populations. So there's a tiny bit changed connectivity compared so, to average. So this is the, that's the average, right? The green is the average yeah. population, the variability across the population. You're the dotted line. Right. So you're a little bit out of typical, but not pathologically so. Okay. So you, if you've had concussions, they're probably old. Yeah. Uh, lots of old ones, and you yeah. might shrug them off mostly by healing. So Wow, that's good. Um, so nothing profound. So is this the average for everyone of my age category? Or? Yeah, it's men your age. Compared to men with your age and your handedness, the connectivity in our brain is What's discreet. handedness? Was? Left and right handed. All right. Um, so whatever handedness affects the brain a little bit, and age, and gender, uh, those three things come together to produce a whole bunch of comparison brains in the database. And then you, that's, that's you against them in this green. Uh, the red is a different population of men your age who had documented head injuries. Right. Um, so uh, this means, like, the, the, what, like, how, how, like, is this like the perfect brain or is this? No, it's just, it's just showing the statistics. You know, what's the likelihood that your brain connectivity looks like a typical brain population or like a TBI population? Like right. Where are you on the connectivity range? And you're mostly into typical. Right. It's a little bit altered connectivity, but not so much the database says, oh, injury. Right. It doesn't, it can't spot it as a, as a typical pattern. It found some unusual stuff, but it's not classic injury so this is nothing to worry about at all? No, probably not. No. Yeah, probably not a significant injury. You may have some more subtle injuries, and one of the places that shows up is in, um, just so you can get a little bit less water noise in the background. Um, one of the places injury markers show up is in how fast your brain is. And so we're gonna look at speeds, and the average human has eyes closed alpha waves that are about 10 hertz, 10 cycles per second. And uh, we're gonna look at yours right now. Okay, it looks like yours are, okay, yours are about just below 10. So that's about average for adults your age. Let's see how statistically different it is. This is just the number of the band, how, actually how, how fast it's measured. And then we'll look at the statistic, meaning you against the population, how fast or slow is that band. And again, we'll look at the alpha column. Oops, a little too big. Uh, so you see that there's no real dramatic differences in the statistics. We use 1.5 as our indication of, okay, that's unusual. Right. And your brain's neither slow nor fast, which is great. With some wear and tear, it's easy to get a slowed down brain. Right. And basically that means accelerated aging. And we don't want to see that, Tony. 
no, yeah. And you don't have that. That's great. Oh, it's good. We also saw just a couple markers that might suggest some anxiety, but your brain's also not running away with itself. It's not yeah. too fast. So we've ruled out sort of extra damage slowing your brain down or extra anxiety making it run away with itself. Neither is true. We do see a few things though. The, the delta waves in the back of the head are running really fast. Two standard deviations, same thing on the right side. So the back of your head, the slowest brain waves, probably have a bit of scar tissue back there. Probably either fell back or had an impact in the back right or something. All right. And then on the right side, the fast cognitive frequencies, betas, are slow. And that is some wear and tear probably as well. So I'm seeing a few like sub-acute indications that might suggest some wear and tear damage. Right. But nothing profound like an actual significant injury you're working through. Okay. So I'm guessing again this must be a lot of old injuries you've shrugged off. Um, and then, uh, let's see. One of the last things we look at is how the ratio of your brain Yeah, so this is looking at what speed is that alpha wave. You make slightly excessive alpha. Uh, eyes open now. And um, alpha, the way I'm measuring is 8 to 12 hertz. But I've broken it out into slow alpha and to fast alpha. And you see that of the two frequencies, you have some of each. The slow alpha is dominating in the front, right. and the faster alpha is dominating back here. So I actually think this is an injury, potentially, back here. Um, the slow alpha is a bit of spaciness, a bit of inattention. And the fast alpha is a bit of like anxiety. Your mind gets stuck and kind of runs away with you at times. And right. A little bit of irritability or buzziness in your mind. Um, nothing profound, but it looks like it's a nice target to go after to really crisp up your attention. You probably also have a hard time sustaining cognitive stuff. Like you're reading a book, you get 10 minutes in, and you get distracted. And before you know it, your eyes have scanned the page a few times, but your mind's doing something right. else. You're yeah, taking information. Fun. Yeah. That's like an ADD kind of thing. It's right. not that uncommon. And I'd want to really shut that down, make you feel just locked in, crisp when you're trying to focus. So yeah. you not get pulled off internally, you know, spacing out a little bit. Yeah. Um, for you, that'd be the most obvious thing. And I'm guessing also your sleep start getting really deep, really restorative. Yeah. You wake up like a little more crisp than you may used right. to. Um, and last, let's look at the ratios. Sometimes looking at ratios and frequencies can give us more of the diagnostic markers. All right, and um, again, we're seeing just mostly this alpha. So this does suggest a little bit of uh, ADD, but no ADHD. These two, these two brains would be red or orange if you were ADHD. What's ADD? Uh, ADD is like the inattentive, the spacey, like the daydreaming oh, right. kind of version. ADHD yeah. is the like interrupting, fidgety, yeah. can't stop talking, like the, the hyperactive kid right. classic, that's ADHD. What we used to call ADD is that without any of the hyperactivity. So you get distracted or inattentive, but you don't get impulsive. Right. So that's what this looks like. You're a little more distractible, a little more inattentive, can kind of shift into neutral a little too easily. Right, yeah. And that may be a function of some wear and tear, maybe a function of the brain you happen to show up in the world with. It doesn't really matter from our point of view. This is all just a snapshot about yeah. the brain you have. And your brain doesn't change very quickly, but we can't tell why. You know, is this acquired? Is this congenital? You, you know, you're born with it. Doesn't really matter. We can still work on it now that we know what it's like. You, know, you heard the way I was asking this. Oh, this can mean irritability, spaciness, fog. Is that true? Oh, that's true. Okay, this is probably where it is. Right. But had you said no, I don't experience that, I, then I wouldn't be emphasizing this quite as much. Looking right. for other things that explain what you're experiencing. Right. So. Um, yeah, actually, a lot less damage, Tony, than I expected to see. Good. Considering that you have a you know career being a physical guy. Right. Um, so in summary, a little bit of wear and tear damage, but not to the degree that it probably pr produces like significant injury. And I'm guessing you have very subtle of those wear and tear symptoms: fog, fatigue, yeah. touch of irritability, like going from calm to frustrated with almost no warning, like right. short fuse. Um, uh, and then a little bit of attention stuff to crisp up, and that will probably also make your sleep more deep. Rest that up. Yeah. So. All right. I look forward. Uh, just a little so snapshot. What, when you're looking at this, compared to your, I guess you look at hundreds of these, right? So th is this normal? It's moderate. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's it's scaled against the population. So anything green is typical. Anything not green is a little atypical. What's blue? Blue is low power. Right. But the blue, you don't actually normally have any low power. The reason the second row here is blue is because it's relative power. It's the percent of the total signal. Right. The top row is amplitude, how many microvolts in each frequency. That's why this is so high. 
but this is most of the signal. So in relative power, this is orange. So these have to be blue to balance the orange. The second row must average out to a solid green head because right. it's the whole signal. So you don't really have any blue in the in, you know, I mean low power. And up here, these are ratios, one over the other. And so absolutes don't really matter in terms of blue. So right. you know, there's a little low power in the slow frequencies. This really just means you have a little bit of a hard time relaxing at most yeah. times. Yeah. Uh, you're settling and turning off your mind at times. It's a little busy at times right. for you. Especially yeah, late at night, you're trying to sleep and your mind's like, you're like, oh, I'm tired, time for bed. Your mind's like, nope. Chatter, yeah. chatter, 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 chatter. You're like, great, thanks. Yeah, that's me. Um, and so settling that down, getting you to tap control over, I'm going to fall asleep now. I'm going to wake up now. I'm going to focus hard now. I'm going to relax now. Yeah. Ease about transitioning and sort of you know like power steering for your mind basically. Right. That's what this will feel like over time. You know, yeah. More just nothing will change fundamentally. Still be you know Tony, but what before was a bit of a push will just, just be easy, and you'll find you have a little more capacity longer in the day and you wake up more cleanly. Yeah. It's subtle stuff, but it starts to build and it can change your life pretty quickly. Right. So nice. Yeah. Thank you. I'll, yeah. I look forward to seeing. Yeah, definitely. So this is my, my sense of where you're at now, and we'll do some training, and then, you know, get a map after a bunch of trainings in, we'll see some so change. Like in a month, can we compare these to Absolutely. the new ones, right? Yeah, so I would expect the alpha to be shut down a little bit. Right. And you'll probably report feeling crisper, feeling more focused, and more deeply rested when you sleep. Right. Those are the three things I would expect in the first month. Yeah, so you sit three times a week, like, like come a day, miss a day, come a day, miss a day. Yeah, ideally you can do that. You can also come three days in a row. Oh, really? That's what you really want. Yeah, if you're going to come less than three days, I want to spread apart yeah. so you don't spend six days in a row without training right. but if you're going to come three times a week it can be Friday, Saturday, Sunday I don't care yeah. just get the get, get the time in the chair so we get the break right. Great. I'm open seven days a week in this office yeah, so feel awesome. free to uh, come and live your life I will so yeah and that's about all I have to say about your brain at this point until we see what happens with some more uh, training right yeah uh, so yeah uh, what's today Tuesday yeah if you can get, get a couple more times this week so we can get you a little push I will uh, I'll try and get on Thursday I'm a weird weekend. Yeah. So um, yeah, the other question I have for you, um, this is not really like a diagnostic like list of everything going on. It's only picking up things that are statistically unusual in a population for men your age. Right. So are there other things you want to work on that I didn't find? Uh, concentration, a little bit of concentration drifts off and uh -huh. s speaking as well. like. So as I get muddled with words. Just finding the words, verbal fluency. Yeah, I might, I might do a little stutter here or there. Like, huh? okay. Even though I'm podcasting, like, I'll, be, I'll be talking and then your mind will just switch off what I was talking about. I don't know. You know? Yeah, that might be the same alpha, actually. Right. Yeah, it's like a timing issue. So your brain you know, doesn't time properly, so you can't pick up the word you're looking for. Yeah. It misses it. You have yeah. to find the next word. I feel like so. the, the, the more that I'm aware of it, the more that it happens. You know? Yeah, it's a, it's a feedback loop with, yeah. your, uh, with your speaking, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that'll probably get uh, sort of lubricated, I would guess, yeah. verbal fluency. And if not, month two, let's chat, and I'll give you some nootropic suggestions to really boost verbal fluency. That would be great. Things you can take like, before the podcast, so you're just right. Uh, yeah. But I like to make a baseline change versus adding short-term acting things when yeah. we talk about biohacking. You, know, we can, you can always add the short-term things, silk yeah. tap, true brain, alpha brain, whatever, always add those. My goals really are, let's see what we can do to your baseline. Yeah. First. Yeah, I love that. And then we can go even further with more, you know, specific modifiers. Right. So. Great. Thank you. Uh, yeah, my pleasure. Um, so I don't have anything else to uh, do with you today. I have another call in about twenty minutes. Just, today, so. just like what I was saying about the, the, the drinking. Stuff, oh yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I, I feel like that's a that's a been a big problem for me. I'm either all in or all out. Yeah. There's a those groups. Uh, MM has uh, free meetings in LA. There's tons of them. And it's not like an AA scene at all. It's it's a very different kind of environment. Right. Um, so you may want to. I, I would definitely buy the book Responsible Drinking. It's a I great will. book. Um, a friend of mine helped write it like thirty years ago, and he's here in town. Right. He's a psychologist. If you're looking for a psychologist who works with moderation and knows the stuff deeply, I can put you in touch with right, him. Right. Yeah. But you may just be able to like do it, read, read the book, do a few of the worksheets, and go. Okay, I'm starting to get a sense of how this works. Yeah. If you're looking to like reintroduce alcohol into your life, I'd suggest working with somebody who has that skill set. It can help you very specifically in a structured way. Start getting back into it with some control. Yeah. What's his name? Mark Kern, Doctor oh. Kern, K E R N. He's known as the Habit Doc in Los right. Angeles. His license plate says Habit Doc. <laughs> um, but he's he's the founder of MM. He's also the founder of something called Smart Recovery, which is an abstinence-based alternative to AA as well. Right. But they're both very similar. Smart's a abstinence-based version of 
getting control of your behavior. MM is a moderation version of the same. Yeah. And they're very similar philosophy in both smart and MM. There's slightly different ones in you know, trying yeah. to abstain, one's trying not to. Uh, but Dr. Kern is a lovely guy. He's been doing this work for like 50 years, well, 35 years or something. Yeah. Um, and he's, he's worth talking to. So I can put you in touch with him. If yeah, you're that's been great. Yeah. I'll so. check that out. Okay, awesome. But no, mate, that's it. Like, really, I, I wanted to see, see, but see this and see what this does. Because I, I told you I've done the, the other one in the Cleveland Clinic yep. in Vegas, yep. and that was a bit worrying. They said that my my brain, my results, got to do balance tests and computer tests where you got to press yep. the button. Yeah, I have one of those actually. Next time you come in uh, without caffeine in your system, I'll do a quick behavior test on you and see if we can spot where the attention stuff is. Yeah, that was. So actually, if you come in without caffeine next time, yeah, we'll give we'll give a cup of coffee because we'll kick in right away. You can sit into the test while you're drinking coffee. Yeah, but I'll I'll test your sustained attention, inhibitory control, uh, inattention, an audio and visual separately. And so I tease out like, oh, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. Oh, a little deficit, fine, fine, fine. Yeah, and that'll help us target. The brain training, but it also may be informative. Oh, I space out in that kind of okay. Now I'll make a little more attention when right. you do that kind of task. Well, that would be good. So we'll do that for yeah. you um, next time you come in. Yeah, uh, just a little bit, half, it'll add in half an hour to your, your, right. your session, maybe an hour. Yeah, that would be awesome. So we'll do that. Um, I'll email Dr. Kern, I'll put you guys in touch via email. Um, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see how it goes. All right, and then uh, your job as a training client is to notice what's happening. And after a few sessions, when you start feeling stuff, changes in sleep, stress, mood, attention. You need to report it. So right. when you walk in, the technicians will say, hey, what's going on? You know, fine isn't as useful as, oh, hard time falling asleep, or better mood, or worse mood. Like, yeah. try to notice the, the fluctuating day-to-day -day stuff. We won't necessarily believe it's from the training until it starts to really trend. You right. Know, it actually makes sense based on work. Yeah. But we'd love to know how the variability is happening. Yeah. So we'll ask you about your sleep, your stress, your mood, your attention. Right. That's so, awesome. So should I just call up the booking? Yeah, or you can just book before you leave. You can always just book the next week right. at a time. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Nice one. All right, man. Cool. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. Oh, great. And let me. Uh, I'll text Kurt and get the email for him, and then I'll send an email later on.